Hello guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all having a good day. So as you read from the title, today's video is going to be an interesting one. Firstly, I wanted to do a tier list that is going to showcase on which class can be the best, I guess, uh, once you fully master them. But I don't, I, I really think that doesn't do justice to any class, honestly, because in Conqueror's Blade, classes are made in a way that if you know how to play your class, you are going to do things that a normal Conqueror's Blade player could not do. You know, so I just decided to skip that and we are going to be covering on which classes are actually the easiest to learn, uh, kind of the safest to play, newbie friendly in general. Because I have seen a lot of people just playing one class and sticking to it like glue, like they do not go away from it. And honestly that is really bad because until you actually try and play another class for a period of time, uh, you are not gonna know if that class is better suited for you. The same applies to me, I just started playing Nodachi practically before starting to make videos for it. Two years ago I was a longbow main, but longbow was uh, very better at that time, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, and I was also a longsword main, uh, actually the same goes for longsword, longsword used to be also better. If I would stick to those classes, I can already feel that I could, that I would not be doing as good as I'm doing. So that's why I wanted to share with you bros, uh, kind of talk, talk it out a little bit, you know, this is gonna be my opinion on which classes are the most uh, newbie uh, friendly I have. I have tried all of them, some more of course, some less, but this is going to be my kind of short and general opinion on which classes are newbie friendly, let's say. We are going to have a grading system that is going to go from S to A, B, C, D, E, and F. So the first one is short sword. Now the short sword, as many would agree, would definitely be one of the, I would say, like the, you have to try this class, like especially when you are starting the game, when you kind of don't know how the game uh, works, uh, short sword and shield is definitely going to, uh, enable you to enable you to do more oopses i guess if you know what i mean put a uh, short sword and shield at the very top that would be the easiest to learn because to be honest it is very tanky uh it has a shield which is great for blocking especially ranged uh, you have a way easier time at taking out ranged units which is particularly a big time a big problem for new players because they don't know exactly which range unit they can jump on how to dodge it etc etc along with that it does have a range 
throw, which is absolutely fantastic for sword and shield. All in all, it's very good in general. Most people who played it at the start do find themselves playing it or using it again at the late game. You're also going to need it at uh, Territory War. It's also very nice to play it in uh, death matches. And in just in general, it's, uh, it's, it really isn't a, not a bad class to have as your main. So I would definitely, without a doubt, put it at S tier. I think it's like the, the very top of this list. If you don't agree, however, leave your opinion in the comments. I would love to talk it out. Maybe you even managed to change my opinion. Now the next class is Glaive. If you are going to play it at the beginning, you are generally going to find yourself using it in the late game or even maining it as a main weapon. I think Short Sword and Shield and Glaive are kind of alike. They're both. I don't see Short Sword and Shield as a hero killing class for a normal player. I know there are some OP players out there that are going to decimate entire teams with a Short Sword, but I'm talking for normal players right now. I think Short Sword is definitely kind of a uh, support factor for the team due to uh, its ulti where it can just belly flop and smash everything away and due to its ability to tank damage often heroes will focus a short sword and they were they they're just gonna get eaten alive but by the other teammates glaive is really similar to that minus the survivability and minus the shield of course basically it's really similar to short sword but it it traded its damage for the survivability. Glaive is, I think, one of the craziest uh, damage bursts that you can do with it, uh, especially if you are full strength. Uh, I'm sure you already seen people doing the Glaive combo where you knock the enemy hero down with the world Warlord's greeting. You jump behind him, you do Breaker of Shields on him, and then you unleash your ulti Flying Reaper. And if he managed to still survive against that, you just chase him down. This is is also very good for troop formations you can just come in blow your flying reaper and just keep doing that every 50 seconds if you want to play it safe it's a def it's definitely a harder class to learn than short sword especially if you want to be mediocre at it like i think even if you want to be mediocre at it you have to put some time into it because it's really specific you you can't really be in a fight the entire time if you know what i mean because all of your attribute points should go into your strength if not all uh, then most naturally some people are going to combine it uh, if you go full toughness you're gonna survive uh, much longer but it just takes away so much of the damage uh, capabilities that the glaive is so good at putting out and honestly i think every class has its role so if glaive is a damage dealer you know just play it like that because if you want a kind of damage dealing uh, tanky class just go for uh, i don't know polax or nodachi or there are just other classes that you can be better at that's why i'm uh talking about glaive now as a full strength build and because of that i would actually put it at c for Glaive because I honestly honestly think there is a learning curve to it and if we're looking at a noob that just came into the game running in archers he's not gonna have a good time plus the attacks have to be correctly timed to work okay so next is pike pike is a entirely new class it came out in season 8 I have played it I can definitely see the power in it a lot of good players have been picking it on uh, and it's really good at it's kind of the glaive with the damage dealing but it focuses more on heroes if you know what I mean I mean they can both take out heroes but I think pike is just so much better at it because it can just CC you like till tomorrow but that being said, it is really squishy. It's even more squishy than the Glaive. Definitely unforgiving for new players. It is medium armor. And if you want to be truly effective with it, you are going to have to put most of your points into agility. And that is really going to hurt you for a medium class because it, it, it is not tanky at all. Uh, I, I think it's not supposed to be. Uh, we are ignoring runes here, but even runes for pike i think are never going to come out 
as making it more tanky because it's supposed to be you know kind of a flying dragon class where you can you know swish swish in and swish swish out uh that being said definitely that's like the hardest medium class to master to be good at it even to learn you know for a new buy I think you'll definitely have an easier time with any other medium class. Definitely any other uh, heavy class and even an easier time with a bow or short bow. So Pike is definitely on E rank as far as learning it from a new buy perspective goes. This is not a tier list on how powerful the classes are, it's just on how hard they are to master. Okay, so next up we have Bow. So Bow was actually my first weapon. Uh, I'm used to playing Bow in uh, games. I think uh, it's a really good factor to the team when you have a good support supporting you. For a new buy, I don't really think Bow would be that hard. Uh, definitely not as hard as Short Bow, just because of the distance. You know, if you are going to get uh, killed by an assassin, that's you can't really do much there. Playing Bow, like you are going to keep that ranged, you're not gonna die a lot of times, and honestly, I I do also recommend it to people that uh, have a hard time or don't really know how to play uh, units uh, so they learn how to command their units better because as bow you're you don't have to be close like you you're, you still have the damage you do good damage output especially when running full agility which you should be running full agility of course same goes for short bow and I honestly don't know. I would uh, I would put it above the glaive to be honest at B because you don't need much to to you know just sit and shoot and you know target ranged units like that's most of what the bow does. Definitely, if you master it, you're going to be better. Like more close quarters with the spread shot and uh, just sniping uh, healing heroes. Still, to learn it, I think it's easy because just because of the long range and. How hard it is to actually get to a bow and kill it so that is going to be category above the glaive dual blades the hardest class to learn in conqueror's blade how many noobs have you seen playing a dual blade and just pushing in front of the army i think that that's that's really a no no brainer uh Dual Blade is the hardest class to master as a new buy because at the beginning you also, you don't know what, if you're, you know, it's a game, it's a battle arena and you're supposed to only focus on heroes. You're supposed to be patient, you're supposed to be opportunistic. A new player does not know how to be patient unless he has like years and years and years of experience in a similar game. And definitely does not know how to be opportunistic because he doesn't even know how to recognize the opportunities so dual blades definitely on f plus it is the only light class that is actually in close combat and is the only class that should be full strength uh, with no points in armor or toughness which basically means you're the squishiest class in Conqueror's Blade, which is really new by unfriendly. So that sits right at the bottom at F. Okay, Musket. Honestly, I think Musket is going to be easier for a new buy to learn than Shortbow, just because of the ability. Uh, what a friend once said, it's the oh shit ability. Uh, that is the Skirmisher 3. Which basically saves you from any situation, especially if you upgrade it to the max. You jump back like half a kilometer and leave uh, Lego cubes behind you, so you even slow down whoever is chasing you. Uh, that is an absolutely lovely skill to have as a new player. Uh, you have more armor, uh, more fighting capabilities than a uh, short bow. Uh, you have more knockdown resist as a short bow and in general i just think it's easier to use because you have bombs you know if you throw a bomb it's hard to miss things definitely hard to master i have seen people who are masters at muskets who completely dominate you they, they will play around with you like a like a little kitten like even if you're a short sword you you will not be able to do anything against them it's really it's humiliating and that puts musket at i would actually say it uh, sits right next to glaive okay and finally we have short bow now short bow is a very very good class once you get to know it uh, as a new player you're also going to have fun with it because if you are bored with bow and you are probably gonna get bored with bow like 
I don't think if there's a bow main, because if you are a bow main, respect to you. Uh, I'm really bored playing bow because you just sit there and you're shooting and you can't really do much than, you know, just shoot your bow and see what happens and support the team. You can't really get in there, you know, and make a close quarter difference, except with the rain of arrows. Uh, however, if you do get knocked or chased uh, while trying to do that, because you have to be like really close, like point black close, you're gonna have a bad time and you're gonna die. Short bow, however, can really support close quarters. Like honestly, if you if you uh, get bored of bow or if you just master it, it, like going to short bow is just Pikachu becoming Raichu because you're just gonna become better at it. Plus, if you find yourself in a situation in a siege or a field battle, well, particularly in a siege where you do need to go to bow again you can switch from short bow to bow at the supply point which is really good because they both uh, uh, demand the same attributes uh, so if you're playing short bow or bow i definitely recommend you switch out those weapons when you need them like if you see falconeris shooting down at your base just switch to bow and take them out you know but that being said short bow is uh, definitely not easy to play especially for a new player if you get knocked down uh, I am a Nodachi main now and I am uh, having fun with short bows that don't know how to dodge. Uh, they normally have only one uh, ability that regains them from being knocked down. And the dash away isn't as far, definitely not as far as the muskets. I think the muskets is at least twice as uh, as long. That being said, I, it, I wouldn't really put it uh, as new player friendly uh definitely not as uh, the musket is or the bow just because of you know with short bow you don't really get a lot of oopses except if you know the hero that is chasing you is gonna die and you just dash three times back and shoot him down you can do that once you get better at it it's definitely a very good class to master uh, but yeah, I just don't see it as noob friendly, which is why I am placing it at D rank. Next, we have Nodachi, my beloved main. Nodachi for uh, newbies. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you this Nodachi is one of the, I personally think, uh, one of the hardest classes to master. It definitely took me a long, 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 really long time. Like, when I look back now, what I was doing, I had no idea what I was doing. What I'm trying to say is it's not as easy to learn to be good at as a new player. But as a new player, you're going to be in matches where there are not a lot of heavy units, which means Nodachi is going to be really good because it's known as the unit killer class, especially in early game. I don't know if I should put it at... It's definitely, it's definitely easier to to use than pike that that i can guarantee it also has a lot of cc resist which is awesome i would put it at d because just because it's hard to learn uh but i'm going to put it as c just because of the fact that when you start playing nodachi from the beginning you're going to have a nice time because you will be regenerating health and you're also going to be a uh, uh gonna have a nice time uh because there are going to be uh, so many low tier units and if you're going to be using all of your attacks against them especially avalanche which is highly effective at beginner tiers uh, you're not gonna have a bad time uh, and that's why I'm gonna put it at a solid C. Polax okay so this class I have tried to play this class many many times and I'm telling you I just cannot it is way too slow for me the attacks seem kind of yeah it just seems situational for me i know it's supposed to be support but i just think i don't know i never kind of felt uh, the class uh i've seen people play it from the beginning and sticking to it uh i've seen a lot of bad polaxes uh i've seen a lot of medium polaxes i've only seen a few very good polaxes uh, that really got to know uh the class but new by newbie wise it's actually not a good it's actually not a bad weapon because it is heavy armor of course that always helps uh you can put your points into armor 
or toughness, which is gonna make you an absolute tank. Uh, it does have CC resist. Uh, it does have a good two. Both ultis are actually good depending on which you prefer and which you get to use. I, I just, just, I honestly didn't like it ever uh it may also be due to the fact that i play high tier games and uh if i play polax you know with like half of the skills researched i'm definitely not gonna have a good time especially if i don't know the class uh mastery wise for looking at uh, the newbie perspective i've se i've also seen a lot of new players uh picking this class i think it's a really solid class i don't know if i uh, should put it above glaive or next to glaive because to be honest glaive is a uh, glass cannon musket is not as easy to learn and odachi also isn't so paul axe to be honest is either for a or b but i think i want to put it at b just because i had bad experiences with it uh as i said for a new player uh, he's definitely not gonna have a bad time honestly any uh, heavy class that you pick you're not gonna have a bad time except Maul because Maul is harder to learn than the other ones uh, and that being said I am go gonna go ahead and put Polex at A just because it has a lot of CC resist it can be very tanky uh, it's really forgiving to be honest and it has a good ulti that can just pin down one hero and you just let your uh, units take care of the other hero. Maybe pin down the heavy heavy hero and uh, let your units attack the medium or light. Next we have Longsword and Shield. One of the most forgiving classes for newbies, of course. Uh, any class that's going to have a shield is really going to help you due to all the ranged units in the map even if you're going to hide your uh, games for a new buy uh, the class is definitely going to be forgiving because you can just heal the entire time you have a good ulti a yolo ulti uh, is what i like to call it where you can charge forward into the troops and just knock everything down uh it definitely doesn't deal damage uh you're going to have a hard time getting kills with it uh however at the start of the game that isn't really the point like you know being the best at the game i think at the start you really gotta learn you know kind of overreach sometimes test out your limits uh learn the class learn in which situations you die learn in which you don't uh, i honestly think that's the only way of learning your class personally you're not gonna learn it from watching a guide from a guy telling you on how to do it but you're gonna learn uh, to do you know those crazy moves by diving into those crazy situations and longsword is definitely a good one with that uh, especially with its ulti that enables you to push and attack and it also enables you to run away and that of course means that it's going to be an s tier especially for anubai when they're going to unlock all of the final skills they're going to be able to do so much more damage they're going to be able to heal their units not just themselves and they're also going to be able to switch to sally forth which only has a 37 second cooldown and is an ultimate skill i think that's Honestly, that is the skill that has the least cooldown, isn't it? It's a very good skill. It knocks everything down that it hits and it keeps you locked into place. So that being said, Longsword and Shield definitely goes into S tier for beginner players. Okay, now we have only two left, which is the Spear and the Maul. We're going to start with the Spear. Uh, spear is definitely not a easy class to play, not even from a new buy perspective. Uh, I think most people pick it up just because of the uh, range kick that it has however it's like n the only thing that kind of saves nodachi as being an easy class to master from a new by perspective is because it regenerates life you know the longer you're gonna be in battle if you get narrow sided you know it's okay because you're still regenerating life i guess but if you get narrow sided with a spear and you overextend you are going to die faster than other heavy classes definitely which i think uh, honestly puts it uh, pretty low it does have a uh, cc resist skill that blocks everything in front of it it has a range attack and some other skills however i think the fact is that the ultis from spear are really hard to pull off especially because at the beginning you don't have the dragon's roar unlocked and even if you do unlock it, it it's still not easy to pull it off 
as best as you can. The other skills aren't really as powerful as they should be, I think, uh, especially not the spear kick. All in all, I just don't find it to be uh, new buy friendly, just because it's a medium class, it is uh, more squishy. Uh, once you master it, don't get me wrong, it's going to be a very good class, uh, especially on horseback, it is the strongest class to play on horseback. However, as a new player, you don't know that, uh, you don't know how to focus as much on that, you know, go in, attack, yada yada yada, have in your mind 20 seconds, dash back, go on your horse, anchor again, yada yada yada. A new player is going to have a hard time keeping all that in mind when he's in battle. We all know that when you go into battle your heart kind of spikes a little bit, you get nervous. Especially a new player will get narrow-sided and probably die. As far as ranking goes, honestly I would put it on A uh, because Pike is still a little more forgiving I guess for new players uh, because you can just jump backwards you know three times which gives you a lot of distance to escape. With spear you can't really do that except if you're in a on a horse. If a player puts like more toughness or armor uh, points into a pike, it can be like you know like so so uh, how difficult they are to play. So I'm actually going to put spear next to pike, which is honestly kind of funny because uh, if you ask me, they're really uh, similar. Uh, pike should be actually called the dragon spear, but I get why they didn't name it that because then they would. You know the community would say wow we have two spears now good job like i want my javelin class give me my javelin class please i will main it i, d I don't care how shitty it is just give it to me and last we have maul the best class in the game uh it can say nope to any class uh an assassin will not kill it a uh, short bow will have a very tough time a good short bow will have a very tough time against a good maul i also find it's hard to defeat a good maul just because uh first you have to think about the yoink ability that they have which is throwing you over the shoulders and carrying you first you have to counter that then you have to counter an attack that he's going to pull off while full stamina if he's gonna do that you either have that option or he's just gonna jump all around you and just kick you little by little. The thing is that he does a lot of blunt damage and a lot of heroes don't have uh, protection against blunt damage. And if you actually manage to pull all of that off, counter all of that and keep him on the ground, you're only going to get him to half HP. You still have a long battle with him to defeat him. In the midst of that he can also run away with mighty Mjolnir. Uh, his allies can come and help him. Uh, all in all, like I think it's just a really hard class to play against, uh, especially if it's full, if they are running full toughness. For a new buy player it is definitely not gonna be the easiest to play uh, because you have to unlock it through seasons. Uh, the skills are not unlocked as uh, they were for Pike, which is kind of like if they, they, if they did that for Pike, they should fix that with Maul, right? Anyway, I think it's just, it, it's a really good class once you kind of get to know it a little bit. Uh, it can be really powerful, uh, but it is hard to get to know it and it's seasonal. So if, if, if it wasn't seasonal, you could only unlock the skills by doing certain things. It would be like two grades higher, but just because it's seasonal and we are talking from a new buys perspective, it is going to be uh, lower than it should. However, once you do unlock it, it is going to be a very good class. You are not gonna regret that you unlocked it and you're gonna pull off some crazy stunts with it. Like no other class can defeat a Maul. Not even Short Sword, like Short Sword is paper against the Maul. Firstly, because he can yoink him even before he unleashes his iron side. And secondly, he does blunt damage, which little heroes have a lot of defenses against. So honestly, I'm gonna put Maul at B. It would definitely be an S tier if it wasn't unlocked only through seasons and only through uh, certain challenges to get skills, which is huge. Like the only S tier classes which we have is short sword and long sword. And it's really huge for another heavy class without a shield to actually make it on S tier. So if we want to kind of repeat where the classes are, short sword, long sword is S, Polaxe is A, B is bow and maul, C is glaive, musket and nodachi, D is short bow, E is pike and spear, and F is of course dual blades. Now remember guys, this is my opinion on where the classes 
should stand at. If you have a different opinion, uh, go ahead, tell me. Uh, we can discuss it in the comments below. I would love to see what you agree with or, or don't agree with, because then I can even correct my opinion, my, you know, maybe false opinion uh, towards a particular class. All right, bros, thank you for watching. Leave me a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to see more. And also if you want another tier list, like maybe even a tier list where you, where the classes stand once you master them, that's definitely gonna need more work than this did. Uh, but if you wanna see something like that on this channel, you know, comment it below. Uh, it's no problem, you know, if you guys have any wishes on what you want to see coming out next on this channel, it's, I would gladly uh, do it if you wanna guide for a specific class you know i don't have a problem playing that class for one week and giving you my opinion on it uh once we do reach 1000 subscribers i am going to be able to create those little pools for you bros where you i'm gonna ask you guys a question and you're gonna vote on what you want to see next and things like that uh, so yeah that's definitely something to keep in mind and as always guys i'll see you next time i want your devotion all your emotions in my hand